So next up in the MySQL series, we're going to be talking about views. What are they? How do you create them? How do you use them? So I have a SQL file here. If you've been following along with the series, then you've got everything that you need. Uh, if you haven't, if this is the first video, you're just jumping in. I've got a SQL file here. The link to this is down in the description. You can open this up. You can copy and paste this in, or you can download the zip, and you can import it into your current database. So it's just going to create all the tables and the functions that we've created previously. All right, now what is a view? So a view is a virtual table. Basically, you can think of it as the results of a query. Maybe I have a lot of complex tables and I'm doing a lot of inner joins to get data sets that I want to use. And I find myself always using the same query with the same inner joins to get the results that I want to use. Or maybe I've got other people who want to use some of my data, but I want to provide a simplified view of that data to them. So we can create a view, which is I can write a SQL select statement that gets me that inner join result, and I can create a view and say, you know what, the result of that record set, that's what the view is. And the cool thing is, that view is always going to be up to date. Whenever somebody asks the view, what do you have inside of it, it's going to give me the latest content, which would be the result of that query. So let's create a query. It'll probably make a little bit more sense once we do that. So we're going to say create view. And what I want to make my view of is I've got the genres table and the movies table. Inside of the movies table, we have that genre ID column. So this is the foreign key that points to the primary key over in genres. There we go. So genre ID is what links these two together. And I want to have a view that has the movie ID, the movie title, and the genre title, those three things, because that's what I'm using all the time. So let's create a view and let's say I've got thousands and thousands and thousands of movies in this table, but the ones that I'm using most of the time are the movies from the genre sci-fi. So let's call our view that. So create view sci-fi as, and then you write your select statement. It's as simple as that. So select and we'll say m dot movie ID m dot movie title and g dot genre title from movies as m inner join genres as g and then we want to filter that because I only want to get the sci-fi ones so where uh, if I knew the genre ID, I could use that. I don't off the top of my head remember what it is, but uh, genre title, the one that we're looking for is sci-fi like that. Okay, that's it. That's the whole syntax. Now that is going to create another entry over here. Right now we've got inside of movies, there's functions and tables. It's going to create another category called views. So I'm going to Copy that, run it, there we go, and here we have it, views. So now, if I click on this, you can see the SQL that ran was select star from sci-fi, and it has the results here. It's got all of the movies from the category sci-fi, and I can run queries on this just like I would on any other table. They act just like they were a table. So there's another user, maybe there's uh, an API that I'm building and I only want that API to be able to access the data from my database that I really think they should be allowed to see. Well, I can create a series of views. Those views can be set up with a database user to say that this database user is only allowed to look at the views. It's only allowed to run queries against those views. That way, They've got the most up-to-date data because this thing, whenever you go and look at it, it's running that query. It's getting the latest data. This is always up-to-date. That's another cool thing about the views. It stays up-to-date with whatever I've got inside of my movies and genre table. Excellent. Now, another thing that you can do with a view is a view can be updatable. 
And by that I mean, if I came in here and I was to update this, so alien, now I can do this in SQL as well, I just want to do a quick demonstration. Um, let's say I change the title to that. Okay, one row affected. Great, not a big deal. Okay, I changed the view, big deal. Well, if I come over here, back into the movies table, and we look at the movies table, we browse through the data inside there, I have updated the original underlying data. So now the table has been updated because I updated the view. So the view is acting as this sort of conduit back to the table. Not only is it allowing me to get the latest data, but it's also allowing me to put data in. Now there are some restrictions. If you do an update, let's, just, let's do an update uh, right now. We'll change that view, we'll change it back to what it was originally. So update view. That's the one we want to change. And we're going to set movie title equal to alien where movie title is currently alien covenant. Alright, so I'm putting it back to what it originally was. There we go. So now I've updated it in the view and in the table because the view is just passing the change onto the table. Okay, so we can do this. We can do these updates, but we have to bear in mind that if we are going to do them, it means that we cannot So the things that we can't have as part of our SQL statement when we're creating the view, if you want it to be updatable, we cannot include aggregate functions. We cannot include uh, group by, which you would be you would do if you were having aggregate functions. Can't use having. We can't use uh, the union keyword, so you can't do unions, um, and also the distinct word along with that. And we can't use the left or right joins, the outer joins. And the last one is subqueries. Okay, so these are the things that we cannot have in our select statement that is generating the data inside the view. So just bear that in mind. If you want to do it, it should be a simple uh, select statement inner joins go ahead use as many as you want but you can't use these things and one last thing to keep in mind when you are um, working with the views if you change the structure of the underlying table your view is now broken by that I mean if I come into the movies table and I change the columns if I rename these columns, so I changed movie title to movie name, well, at that point, I've broken my view because it was relying on there being a column here. So basically, if you add or remove columns, you rename columns, you're going to mess up the view. The view relies on the table being the same as it was when the view was created. So don't make changes to here, or if you do, then you're going to have to change. You're going to have to drop your view and recreate it. And you can drop view sci-fi. That will get rid of it. Okay. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments down below. I will provide the link to that SQL file. I'll provide a link to the rest of the MySQL uh, video playlist and also the MySQL reference for creating views. As always, thanks for watching.